Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Raven's Mirth. Tonight, we'll be doing the new moon in Scorpio reading. It's a super moon um, here in the United States. It will be in California. It will be on the 14th, um, arriving at 9.07 p.m. So this super moon in Scorpio really is bringing the energies of transformation and change. Um, Scorpio is a water sign and water represents emotions and Scorpio is the sign of transformation. And so especially as a super moon and along with all the other astrological events that are happening in the skies right now, this moon in partnership with all the astrological changes is going to be a heavy hitter and a, have a heavy emotional impact into what we need to or are in the uh, midst of transforming in ourselves, in our surroundings, and in our lives. So we have three uh, pick a card stacks this evening. And to represent that moon energy, I have my Terminated moonstone and my rose quartz and moonstones there on the bottom. I love the terminated uh, moonstone because it represents both moons. The black tourmaline combined with the white or iridescent moonstone. It represents the new moon and the full moon. So I love that uh, crystal. I love crystals and I um, have how light. Uh, for uh, and it's Buddha, of course, and how light is for calming, peaceful energy and bringing stillness. Uh, this pink one over here is a really hard name to say, um, but what it does, and I have to attest that it does do that, is it brings heart peace and it stills anxiety and emotion. And I place it in my bra uh, on my heart. Uh, chakra and it really does bring peace to the heart energy reducing anxiety and stress so that's what we're going to be talking about because during times of change and transformation it can be quite stressful um, change is not easy especially emotional or inner change so our first stack that we have here uh, has the bead of a hug and sometimes when life is hard and we struggle to get through things. Sometimes we just need a hug and it worked really well. I did them separately. With the number two, number two is about partnership and relationships and finding balance. So they go really well together. Uh, and then we will have a, we have one, two, three, four, five cards um, in each stack, at least different cards in each stack. We have the C Melodies uh, Mermaid Messages. We have the Queen of the Moon Oracle deck by Stacey DeMarco. We are using the, the Shadowscapes Tarot. The artwork on these is amazing. Um, we also have a the uh, Angels of Atlantis Oracle by Richard Crooks. We have the Saltwater Reading uh, Oracle Cards uh, by Laura Bowen. And we have, last but not least, closing out the stack, is the White Light Oracle by Alana Fairchild. These are some of the most beautiful cards, oracle cards I've ever seen. Um, I love the artwork and the very, um, what is it, elegant um, designs and um, pictures that are on these oracle cards. They're great healing cards. Um, and the second stack of oracle cards, uh, pick a card today we have is comes with the bead of will. And to bring about change is we have to be willing to do it and the will to get through it and the will to even try to do it. Um, and it comes with the number three, which is about balance, 
um, within the mind, body, and spirit. It's a trinity number. And then we have our little witch's rune on each stack. Um, our last and third pick a card stack is the number five and the bead of happy. And it's five is about bringing about change and trying to be happy through the change or that change will bring happiness. Uh, today we're going to focus on transformation, cleansing and healing, and um, the energies of new beginnings. So let's get started and we'll start with stack one, stack two, and stack three. Um, and we'll get into the readings. I'm going to move these decks off. And when it's time for them, we'll get back to them. All right, let's see what our hug wants to bring us. And our partnership and balance wants to bring us today. Let's start with our witch's rune. And this witch's rune is the rune of man or masculine energy. And when we tap into that masculine and divine masculine energy, it brings out the courage because sometimes it is what we need to bring to light. It can be very difficult. And sometimes that masculine energy really pushes us to do the things that we may be scared of um, and bring it out into the world. Uh, the masculine energy is about that outside persona and the divine feminine is about that inner self. So let's keep going and then we'll weave the web of all the cards together. I'm gonna lay them out first and then we'll read them. Um, the energy of dive. You don't find pearls on the seashore. Ooh, I can't. Time to dive deep. That's what Scorpio's all about. And we have the Queen of Wands. Page of Swords. And the Four of Pentacles. And for our moon... Queen of the Moon Oracle, we have Faith. Beautiful card. I'll make sure they're in frame here in just a second. And for our uh, Oracle, White Light Oracle uh, card, we have Yeshi. Uh, Tsogil, I'm gonna guess. She's my girl. This is my life path number. 333 has been one of those synchronistic numbers that have been popping up a lot lately in my life. Um, and we have Archangel Raziel uh, with the energy of dreams. And our saltwater tarot card, our saltwater oracle card is of the albatross and the energy of endurance. Mm. I'm gonna switch these. There we go. Let's get them all in frame. Maybe we'll stand these up. There we go. All right, let's go through these. All right, let's start with our Oracle cards, the albatross and the energy of endurance. And the albatross is about and represents the energy of enduring uh, long periods of struggle and, and strife. Um, the albatross is one of a f only a few birds that actually live at sea. They do not live on land. They're a quite large bird. But the albatross hunts, feeds, and lives in on the ocean, far from land. And they really only come to land when it's time to nest. Um, but it's pretty rare and not uh, very often. And they endure the hardships of being at sea during storms, high waves. And I think their greatest messages 
they ride out the wave. If you try to fight a wave or confront a wave, you're going down. But I think that the greatest skill that albatross has is they ride the waves and they ride the storm and they don't let the storm consume them, but they ride with the storm, not against the storm. And Archangel Raziel is coming in with dreams. Dreams is about that inner energy um, or divine energy during dream time. And you can see all this beautiful purple um, light, which is the crown chakra. And it really is when we sleep, your conscious mind is resting. And it opens us up to that divine energy. And your angels, guides, and divine support will come in during dream time. You may not remember, but they're with you. Um, I also see this card as, what are your dreams? Um, where, what, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And how do you want to get there? Um, I think when things feel chaotic or things feel like they're, you're in a storm, um, you, it, it helps to have a goal, like a place that you're aiming to be because it keeps you and shifts you out of that negative energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to get there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to, I have a goal and I know it may be hard right now, but I'm going to achieve that. And this card goes phenomenally with that is having faith that you're going to get to that place. Having faith you're going to get out of the storm. Having faith that you're going to reach those dreams. And Yeshi is a guardian and um, a protector. And she is um, uh, a tigress that will carry you through those hard times, protect you through those hard times, and bring you through those challenges and help you see your way out through those challenges. And um, I've called upon Yashi many times to help me through times that I didn't think I could get through. I didn't have the courage to get through it. And I just asked for her energy to surround me and carry me through it because I didn't know if I was going to get through it. Um, and that the uh, tarot cards is, you know, really support that, the whole story. Um, the Four of Pentacles in a Rider Waite deck is, uh, which is a card of Capricorn, is um, a little guy sitting with pentacles under his feet in his arms. Uh, he's sitting on them and he's protecting them. And this beautiful dragon is kind of doing the same. It's like, nope, nope. I'm not, I, I don't want to see anything. I don't want to know anything. I just, this is what I have and this is all I'm going to get. And this is all, I'm just going to protect this. If we don't learn to release or let go of something, we can't put our hand out to receive anything else. We'll always be stuck with the same thing. So it's letting go of things. And if you can't let go of something, you can't receive something new. And so letting go of old energies, uh, negative energies, negative thoughts, then we are not going to shift into a place of, okay, I'm ready to receive new. I'm done with these old narratives that run through my brain or these old storylines or programming that people put in you. And by releasing those, then you're able to receive. And the Page of Swords, it's learning how to, um, the pages are learning. And they're seeking information and they're not a knight, they're not a queen and they're not a king. They're at the very beginning stages of, I want change and how am I gonna get there? And pages are the seekers of information. And they're the beginning of something. So a new beginning in something. And this and the source energy is about air. Air is about communication in the mind. So changing your mindset. Changing how you think about things. Letting go of an old thought process. Bringing on a new. Learning a new way of thinking. A new way of being. And a new way of communicating. And by doing that... You can step into your power. The Queen of Wands is a passionate, driven, action-taking queen. She stands in her power. She knows what she wants. And she's ready to do what she needs to do to get to that place. So letting go of what we really don't need to hang on to. 
diving deep to find that pearl that lives within us, if we can't learn to let go of the shell and the soft tissue that surrounds the pearl, then we're never going to get the pearl. So we have to be willing to let something go. Know that it's going to be okay and have the faith that things are going to turn out all right. Let go of what we don't need to hang on to anymore. Learn a new way of thinking, a new way of communicating, not only with ourselves, but with others. A new way of thinking about ourselves and others. To be able to step into our power and begin to be passionate and take the actions we need to be self-sufficient, to be strong, to be courageous and start and embark on that new beginning. It takes endurance and courage to get through it. And it takes the strength and support of those around us and those who are with us and align with us, whether that's divine support or your spouse or partner support or a best friend support. A relationship that is founded in the love of who you are without judgment or without criticism. They just love you for who they are. Doesn't matter if it's a friend, it doesn't matter if it's a spouse, but they truly just love you for who you are and they support you through it, right? And you have Archangel Raziel coming to you in your dreams to help you connect to your dreams, to bring your dreams forward and bring them into this new beginning. So I think overall, ask for a hug. Use that divine masculine to be courageous. Have faith. It's easier to get through difficult times if you ride the wave and you don't force yourself through the wave. You don't force yourself through the emotions. You feel them, you move through them, and you move on. And you move on to the next thing and you open yourself up to receiving something new. And being able to move through it fluidly and not trying to resist it. The more we resist it, the harder it gets. All right, these are your messages, pile one. I hope they help you through this transformational, emotional healing time in this Scorpio new moon. Ask for a hug. Ask it from a friend or a partner. Help yourself find a balance and release and heal those things you no longer need. Good luck. Blessed be. And sending you lots of love and light. Bye-bye. Okay, pile number two. Uh, let's see, we have the bead of will and the number three. Three is about building. It's also a trinity. It's the balance of mind, body, and spirit. Um, the will to change, the will to allow change to happen, and a willingness to move forward, transform what no longer serves you, and take yourself into a new beginning. We also have the witch's rune of Poison. Um, poison is negative energy. Negative energy that we allow to consume or interrupt us. And it's a time to transform that and release that negative energy and release those things that no longer serve us in this life. Especially, coincidentally, is what this new, new moon in Scorpio, which is a super moon, coming on the 14th. So, let's see what our will... And what we are building is going to bring and what we tools we have to move past that negative energy and move through it and transform it. All right, our mermaid messages are take the helm, be in control of your own ship. Don't let the negativity rule you. Don't let someone else's negativity or your own negativity rule or run or drive the ship. You have the power to do it yourself. You have the power to take control and own your ship. Don't let negativity own the helm. All right, I'm gonna lay out all the cards and then we'll read them. All right, we have Six of Cups. Oh, something from the past. Children, inner child. Ten of Cups. Oh, Ten of Cups is beautiful. I'll, sit, I'll bring it closer. Ten of Cups. Look at all those cute little teddy bears. 
Ten of Cups is emotional fulfillment. The ending of a chapter of strife and tri tribulation. And moving into emotional fulfillment and completing a cycle. Love it. And we have the Hierophant. Beautiful card. And the Hierophant is about the energy of discipline, control, owning it. It's the highest uh, spiritual person in a card. It represents mm, um, educated, uh, like education, um, like universities, um, big corporations. It's about, it could be about marriage. It's about the energy of that large scope mastery of whatever the topic it may be. We have the Thunder Moon. Oh, I cannot. Uh, change is upon you. Hmm, I wonder. Thunder Moon, that's just what should be the second name of the Scorpio Moon, is the Moon of Change. Love it. See what our white light oracle deck have, has for us. Uh, telepathy of Terra Mater. I love this card. I'm going to read uh, some of the uh, information description from the book because they're so beautiful. Archangel Gabriel. Hmm. Balance. And has all the beautiful throat chakra and third eye chakra coming in. Love it. Last card, the snake, sea snake, letting go. Snakes are about transformation and they are in this particular it card is the number 30. So the number three, very synchronistic. And this one's 36, which is uh, reduced down to nine, which is a triple trinity. Three, three, three. Love it. Beautiful. Just like our little three down here. All right, let's read these cards. I think, uh, as you're all aware, change is upon you. So what can you do to make it through that change? Take control. Release. You see all that negativity in this card. All that turmoil that is around them. Take control. And sometimes you can only take control of how you're feeling. And it's really not going to be able to control the people around you. You can only control you and how you let it impact you. And change is not easy. Change is difficult. Um, but it's the will to get through the change, right? It's the will to push through it and find another way of seeing it to be able to get through it. And the Six of Cups in particular, is about something from the past. Something from the past that weighs on you. Uh, something from the past that impacted your inner child. Um, a childhood trauma. Um, something in that deep part of you that needs to be released and cleansed and healed. Uh, maybe it has to do with something that a child, um, your child has hurt you and caused you trauma or negativity. Or someone or something from your past is coming back to you and it can feel scary it can feel that it is not always a good things when things like that come back um but it's something that needs to be dealt with so that it can be released and healed and if you do you're going to come to a place of emotional fulfillment great joy great bliss emotionally feeling like you have all the emotional support you need and uh, emotional fulfillment to make yourself feel balanced and connected. Um, and maybe you need help from someone like a psychologist or an institution that can help you work through that healing. Um, maybe it's not trying to do it on your own. Uh, maybe it's really getting someone to help you through it. Um, because trying to let go of something that's deep and that's negative, you know, like a snake sheds its skin, that's not easy. 
If you've ever watched a snake shed its skin, I have, I had snakes. Um, it is very challenging for them to wriggle out of that old skin. They use rocks, they use sticks. I had to put in a lot of extra things in there for her to try to get out of that old skin. It's not easy. And if you can't do it alone, ask for help, get help. But getting help is the first step in taking control. You know, it's the first step in saying, I can't do this alone. I need someone to do this with me. Um, I need someone to keep me, you know, balanced. Call on Archangel Gabriel. Ask Archangel Gabriel to give you balance and support to it. You know, um, and start with the things that you know you feel you can, you know, work with. Don't say, I'm going to cure it all today and then get stuck halfway through it and be like, I give up. You know, start small. Start with something that doesn't feel as scary so that you can have balance during a time of healing and cleansing so that you can bring on that new beginning. Because once you do that, then you're going to step into another, a whole nother energy and a whole nother way of being and move yourself into emotional fulfillment and a time of great joy and happiness, right? Let's get the Terramata. Um description here because these descriptions are just beautiful all right for Terramata it says for telepathy the pathway of your spiritual fulfillment and the sacred manifestation of your purpose is not necessarily logical and will Evolve organically. The skill and unpredictable workings of the Earth Mother are supporting your soul journey unconditionally. Following up uh, on inspired ideas and allowing for the unexpected shifts in direction are integral to the manifestation of your soul purpose. Commit to an idea that feels good to your heart. Even if it seems improbable or unattainable, it will manifest successfully. Oh, open your mind, open those thoughts to the will, have the willingness to change and open yourself up to receiving, releasing the old and getting that mindset into a place of, I will, I see my dreams. I see the vision that I want and I will achieve it. I love it. This is amazingly synchronistic. I love when the cards do that. All right, pile number two, this is your reading. I hope it helped. I hope you have an idea of what will help you move into that next step in the energy and changes of this Scorpio new moon. And if um, it doesn't, that's okay. Please take what does resonate with you. And have a wonderful evening. Blessed be. And sending lots of love and light. Thank you. All right, pile number three. We have the bead of happy. Oh, never wants to focus for me. Happy. There it is. And we have the number five, which is change. Happy change. I love it. Happy change. That sounds good. I like happy change. Change sometimes makes happy. Love it. And the rune of. Oh. The rune of love. I love it. Oh. Ignore that. And this is the rune of love. Oh my gosh, how cute. Love it. The rune of love. Oh, look. Happy love. Oh my gosh. Love is happy. Happy loving change. I love it. Amazing. Oh, I swear this little rune is so slippery. I made them. All right, let's read our messages. All right, our mermaid messages. Let's see. Communicate. Things left unsaid will never reach the shore. Ooh. Good message. What are we not saying that needs to be said? 
own loving messages, things that will bring you happiness. We're not saying you're not saying them. Hmm. Ha! Huh. The lovers, I cannot. The synchronicity in these is to die for. So the lovers, the moon, again, synchronicity. And the hermit, oh, I cannot with these cards. Amazing. All right, let's see what the queen of the moon oracle has for us. And then I'll read the cards together. <gasps> Self-love, there it is. That's what it's about, self-love. Oh, how beautiful. Health, self-love brings happiness. Changing how we love ourselves and how we communicate with ourselves, the narratives that we tell ourselves. Beautiful. Archangel, or yep, oh, I cannot. Archangel Tophio. Joy, happiness. This is amazing. What a beautiful reading. I love it. Oh my goodness. Archangel Tophio with joy. Happy, joy, can't yeah, love it. Um, Seraph, Seraph. And the uh, 963 gigahertz, or yeah, hertz. Um, so I find these, when I get these cards, I find that uh, hertz on YouTube. And I find which one of those hertz resonates with me. But I'm going to read her message from the book. Um, they're just beautiful messages and I can't remember them the way they're written. So I'm going to look in the book and read them out to you guys here in just a second. All right. Oh, coral strength. That is beautiful. And it's the number five. OMG. I cannot. The number five. 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 Okay. This is like way beyond synchronistic. Oh. Just too much. Just too much. All right. All right. Let's look at these cards and see what we've got going on here. All right. Let's start with these. So it's beautiful that we have um, the lovers. The lovers is about um, a choice. It's also about love, partnership, um, but having options and making a decision um, about, you know, many things. Uh, it could be about love. It could be about, but based on this reading, it's about love and it's definitely self-love. What are you communicating to yourself? And that is hurting you and not um, really sharing uh, the messages that you need to hear that are loving, right? And if you need love and this is a partnership um, that you want to build, are you telling that person? Are you communicating with them that you need love or you love them or want their love in your life? And the moon is amazing it is also about things unseen the path unknown and being uncertain about what's going to happen if you do communicate that you love somebody or what is going to happen if you don't if you share how you're feeling or you um dive in to say hey i like you you know or hey uh, i love me um and i'm important too so what is it that you're not um, embarking on that you're shying away from that you need to trust in yourself oh look there's a little heart right there that you need to trust in yourself that it's important enough to you know move past the fear and um embark on that journey to bring love to you um whether it's with yourself or another and i love the hermit because the hermit is about um going within Going within and shining your inner light and going within to look at yourself and what is inside. It's a card of Virgo and what inside you needs to be loved. Um, we can only get and receive love once we give love to ourselves. We cannot love another until we love ourselves. So what do you need to communicate to yourself or another? What is hurting you that you need to change and transform is it that certain narrative? Because self-love is the first step to finding and giving love. And if we cannot love ourselves, we truly cannot give love. Um, you will be looking for love in another. And you're looking for them to love you in a certain way. 
and when they don't love you the way that you need love, then you're disappointed. So loving you first creates those amazing loving relationships that you want around you. I know it sounds contradictive, but it's true. I can tell you from personal experience, it is very true. And we really need to have strength. You know, coral um, is life-sustaining for almost every sea creature. Okay, not almost every, but you know what I'm saying. So many sea creatures depend on coral for sustenance and survival. And the coral is strong and we need to have strength to look at what we don't want to, to bring change, to love ourselves, to change our communication with ourselves and communicate to others what we need. And by doing all these things, we bring in joy. We bring in happiness. And it is truly that happy change that we need in our lives. And I dropped the happy word. She's going to leave it there. And it is being mm, confident. And this is the solar plexus chakra where our confidence lives. Self-confidence um, comes from self-love. And it really cannot be given by another. Someone else can't make you or love you enough to, excuse me, make you confident or self-confident or bring you that strength and courage to to love yourself. It's look at yourself and see what is beautiful. I am beautiful. Why are you not? Just because someone on mm, Instagram uses a filter because someone says that you're supposed to look a certain way. There is no certain way. There's no perfect way. It is your way and you're perfect in the way you are. Not the way another says you need to be. Took me a really long time, okay, 45 years to realize that. Just uh, gonna say that right there. Uh, Seraph, let's see what her message is. Let's pull the book. Here. And it is. Practice connecting to the joy that is always deep within you. Okay, I cannot. These things are insane. Thank you, Spirit, amazing. Pay attention to what brings you exquisite delight. If you don't know what it is, you're guided to experiment and explore. Connecting to the joyful capacity of your heart will heal so much negativity and uncertainty. Let your heart relax. Allow the spiritual grace that wishes to reorder your life to manifest its miraculous magic. I am dead. These cards are so beautiful. This is why I love reading cards. Things like this so beautiful, so much about love, so much about joy, and so much about change and changing yourself. Go and listen to the 960 um, uh, Hertz. Um, you can find them on YouTube. I listen to all those all the time. Um, I have my favorites, I, um, but find yours. There's many different people who put out different Hertz and different music um, connections. I personally use music a lot um, to settle my mind stop the racing, and connect me to my heart space. And I think that's exactly what you could use to help you do it. So remember, joy and happiness. Oh, I dropped the happy. Joy, happiness, finding your happiness, changing takes strength. It takes self-love. It takes communication with yourself and others and communicating with others in what you need from them to be happy with them, but it starts with you. Don't be afraid of what you cannot see. Don't be afraid of what is uncertain. Um, your little rune of love, it's all about love and that inner self that you can change and bring forward to bring yourself love and happiness. This was such a beautiful reading. Thank you guys. These are your messages. I hope and wish you a blessed new moon. Much healing, love and light. Thank you very much.